Hi, and welcome to today's Tuesday tip. As promised, we have four more tips for your MRRs. We stopped last week talking about EIV and talking about you using EIV according to your policy. The next thing I want to talk about EIV is that you need to have a master file, and the master file needs to have the reports in them. The other thing I want to say about EIV is you can't just pull the discrepancy report and do nothing with it. You have to do something. You can write on the report, you can write on a blank sheet of paper to the file, but as a reviewer or an auditor of the EIV information, I have to see that you're doing something with the income discrepancy. Now, that was the first tip. The second one, also pertaining to EIV, you guys are not running the 90-day income report. 90 days after the move in 59 is transmitted to tracks, you have to run an income report. And I'm not seeing that in a lot of files. So don't forget to run your income report. The third thing still with EIV is that a lot of you want to send third party, old fashioned third party verifications to get your income. That's only used if the resident says that they are not working there anymore or there's something wrong with the information that you receive. But going in the 4350 down the chain of what's acceptable as a third party verification, you need to verify that particular cert with, first of all, an EIV income report. Second of all, consecutive paycheck stubs. Now, the consecutive paycheck stubs are according to what, again, your policies and procedures say. I've been seeing the same company at the same property get three checks, get six checks, get eight checks. No, there has to be some consistency there. So if your policy says that you will receive four checks, then the reviewer is looking for four checks. If your policy says six checks, then the reviewer is looking for six checks. So let's kind of tighten up on the income verification for your ARs and your IRs in EIV. Lastly, lastly, check your new hire report in EIV and make some type of documentation or note to the file so that the reviewer will know that you have just not ignored the fact that Sheila Thompson is working, but Sheila was working before she moved in and EIV is just catching up with that or you have contacted Sheila about her job and you've done a new 5-9 to include that information. Often you don't have to do an IR certification because a person went to work and you didn't know it. You could do a correction to the last full cert. So with that in mind, I want you to tighten up on your EIV because it's important. And you don't want to be in the position with EIV that HUD's saying take back 5% because that happens too. And we'll talk about that in a future Tuesday tip. Thanks for tuning in, and we look to see you next week on Tuesday Tips for more MOR don'ts. Thank you. Did you like this video? Hit the like button below. Do you want to see more content just like this? Be sure to subscribe to all our social media platforms. And if you know someone who could really use this information, be sure to share it.